Okay, let's make this really crazy looking colored blob in Touch Designer right now. The purpose of this tutorial is to show you some of the basics of Touch Designer and just show you how to make a cool shape without doing too much work and without changing too many parameters. I don't change a lot of parameters in this video, so I hope you enjoy the basic nature of this video. The concept that I used to make this animation was that I wanted to just use some basic operators and not change the parameters too much. So if I zoom out here, you should see that there's only about 10 or 12, maybe 15 operators in total in this project. And if we zoom in a little bit further, we can see that some of these, we can see that some of these operators are actually being repeated. For example, I have a sphere and then three noise operators. So we have some repeating operators here and I'll zoom out again and show you a different part of this project. And we have some kind of typical sets of operators that usually go together, such as a camera, light, geometry, and render, as well as a fong and some noise. So I'm gonna show you step-by-step step exactly how to make this animation in Touch Designer right now. All right, so I created a new project and the first thing I'm gonna do is get the palette out of the way. So in the top left corner, just press the X on the palette and then that gets rid of the palette so that we have some more working room. All right, let's get a nice quick start to this touch designer project. Basically, I'm gonna add a sphere operator and then a couple of noise operators to deform the sphere. So let's double click in the empty grid area of touch designer. Let's go to that blue category SOP and in that category, let's just click on sphere and drop sphere somewhere in the grid area. Now let's right click on the output of the sphere and this time in the SOP category, let's go ahead and click on noise. Just drop noise somewhere to the right of sphere. And now we're gonna add two more noise operators. So right click on the output of the noise operator, click noise and drop noise. And then one last time, let's right click on the output of the second noise operator. And let's click on noise and drop a third noise operator in there. So at this point we have a sphere, we have noise, and then we have two more noise operators. So one sphere, three noises. And now at this point, we're going to add some color to our animation. So I'm gonna scroll over a little bit. And now let's just right click on the output of the last noise operator that we placed. And then in the comp category, we're going to click on geometry. And just drop geometry somewhere to the right of that last noise operator. So at this point, our SOPs or our quote unquote geometry is being output to an actual operator called geometry. So at this point, we can just add two operators so that the geometry has some color. First, let's go ahead and double click in the empty grid area to open the op create dialog. And then at this point, we're gonna go to the mat or materials category and just click on fong and then drop fong somewhere below geo. Now let's go ahead and attach a noise to our fong and that noise is going to provide color to our fong Then our fong is gonna to connect to our geo. So let's double click on the empty grid area here. This time let's go to the top category and then just click on noise and then drop noise somewhere below fong. And now with the noise operator selected in the parameters of the noise operator, just click on monochrome to turn on color. Okay, and now we are ready to connect all the pieces. So now let's just drag noise onto Fong until the border of Fong turns green and then just drop noise onto Fong and then click on color map. And now we're just going to drag and drop Fong onto Geo. So drag Fong onto Geo until the border of Geo turns green and then drop Fong onto Geo. And then click on this menu item that says material. And now you can see that our geometry has color. So all we did there was add an operator to create some colorful noise. And then we added an operator that basically allows us to apply that noise, to apply that noise to our geometry as a quote unquote texture or a surface, as you might say. And then our geometry is basically tying everything together. So at this point, I'm just gonna add a few operators to make it so that our geometry is being rendered and basically that just means we can export it as a movie file or we can view it in the background of Touch Designer here. So let's do that right now. Let's double click in the empty grid area 
and this time go to the comp category and click on camera. And I like to put the camera somewhere above the geo. And now let's double click on the empty grid area and still in the comp category, just click on light. And I like to put light somewhere to the right of cam. So now we have geometry, camera, and light. Now let's just double click on the empty grid area one more time and this time go to the top category and then just click on render. Drop render somewhere below light and to the right of geometry. And then you can see that these lines automatically connected our, our previously placed operators and those lines automatically connected to render to feed into render. So now our geometry is being rendered and at this point, we can display this in the background of Touch Designer by clicking that little display button on the render operator. I'm gonna zoom out. So we have our basic animation in the background. There are some issues with it, and I'm gonna show you how to fix those issues right now. So first thing, the animation is too big for the display window. So let's just click on the geo operator and in the parameters for the geometry operator, we have this parameter uniform scale. Let's just go ahead and dial that uniform scale down to about 50%. And now our animation is fitting within the background of Touch Designer, pretty much. Okay, next issue is that the animation doesn't have enough detail. You can basically see all of these jagged edges in the animation and it just doesn't look very good. So let's go ahead and change that right now. So what I'm going to do is go to the sphere operator, the very first operator that we placed in this project, and just click on that sphere operator. And in the parameters of that sphere operator, let's just click on the detail tab. And then for the row parameter in the detail tab, let's change that from 20 to 200. Now in the background of touch designer, you can see that those edges are already being smoothed out much, much more than they were before. So we got rid of the jagged edges but I still like to change the number of columns from 40 to around 100 or so. And that should increase the amount of overall detail in our animation. We have a more smooth, less jagged appearance. Okay, so we're done with that part. If we go and look at the animation a little bit more closely, you can see that the colorful noise texture is being applied to the geometry, but it doesn't look that great. So let's add an operator or two that makes this look much better. So what I'm gonna do is go to the initial noise operators that we added in our Touch Designer project. And I actually need a little bit more room in between that last noise operator and that geo operator. So what I'm gonna do is just shift the first four operators that we placed to the left uh, quite a bit. So I'm just moving these first four operators that we placed in Touch Designer over to the left. And boom, there we go. So now we have room for some operators in between the last noise operator and the geo operator. What we're going to do is we're going to add an operator after the last noise operator. So we're just going to hover over the line connecting noise to geo. And then once that line turns yellow, let's just right click on that line. And then let's click insert operator and then just click on the texture operator and place texture somewhere to the right of noise, but leave room for one more operator here. So here's texture, and then we're gonna add another operator right after that. So now I'm just gonna place texture just to the right of noise. And after we place that, you can see how that changed the animation in the background, but the animation still looks quite blurry. So let's add another operator to try and fix that. So when I'm zoomed out, we can see what we're doing a little bit better here. We have our last noise operator, then we have a texture operator, and then we have geo. So now in between texture and geo, let's add an operator. So let's go ahead and hover over the line connecting from texture to geo. So just hover over that line until that's yellow, and then just right click, then click insert operator. And now we're going to click on the operator that says attribute create drop attribute create somewhere to the right of texture. And then in the parameters for attribute create, we're just gonna turn on both of these toggle switches, the one that says compute normals and the one that says compute tangents. And if you'll notice after we turned on compute normals, the compute normals basically made it so that light reflects off of the surface of our shape. And once we zoom out, we can see that our animation looks like this now. So when we look at our animation, 
The color looks pretty splotchy, so let's fix that now. Let's go to the noise operator that we placed just below our Fong operator. And let's click on that noise operator so we can change the parameters. First parameter we're going to change is the period parameter. Let's just change that to 5. And now we can see the noise became less splotchy. Now let's change the harmonics. Let's change that to 9. And you can see that by changing that parameter, it basically gave the noise more of an airbrush kind of feel. So just after changing those few parameters, if you look in the background of Touch Designer, you can see it made quite a drastic effect on the coloring of the geometry there. So with the noise operator selected, I'm just going to change one last parameter in this operator. And that last parameter is the harmonic gain. Let's change that from 0.7 to about 0.5. And now your animation should be looking something like this. Okay, let's just make some more tweaks to get this looking a little bit cooler. So I'm going to go back to the first operator that we placed, which is the sphere operator. So click on that sphere operator. And what I'm going to do is just go to the parameters of the sphere operator, click on the sphere, click on the sphere tab of the sphere parameters, and just change the radius and the X value, change that from one to two. That basically just doubled the width of our originating geometry. That turned our sphere into an oval, essentially. So the animation should fit better in the screen. It should fill more of the screen, basically. Okay, now that we change the sphere, let's go to the first noise operator after sphere. And in the parameters of that first noise operator after sphere, let's change the period to five. And let's change the harmonics to two. Let's also change the roughness from 0 0.5 to about 0 0.16 ish. And then let's just change the exponent to about 3.7 ish. And the parameters that we just changed basically just change the way that that first noise operator is acting on our sphere. Okay, now let's make our animation so the surface is bumpy. So what I'm going to do is kind of scroll over to where the fong and the noise are at. And in this area where we have our fong and our noise, I'm going to add a new operator. So I'm just going to double click in the empty grid area. And then I'm going to click on the top category, and in the top category, I'm just going to click on normal map, and then put normal map somewhere to the right of noise, and then go ahead and connect noise to normal map. Now in the normal map parameters, we have the toggle switch that says height map in alpha channel. Just go ahead and turn on that toggle switch. And now we're just going to drag and drop normal onto Fong. So drag normal. Hover over Fong until the border of Fong is green, and then drop normal onto Fong, and then click that menu item that says normal map. Now in the parameters of the Fong, just turn on the toggle switch that says enable height map, and then go ahead and drag the noise operator onto the height map field and drop that onto height map. And now we should be able to play with the bump scale and see some results in our animation. So if I turn that up, you can see that now the surface of our animation is quite bumpy instead of being totally smooth like it was before. And by the way, that is at a bump scale of 21. The one thing I like to do in a case like this is to change this parameter so that this parameter is actually dynamic instead of static. So I'll show you how to do that right now. Let's go ahead and double click on the empty grid area. And then in the chop category, go ahead and click on LFO. Then drop LFO somewhere to the left of noise. Now in the parameters for LFO, let's change the type from sine to Gaussian. Let's change the frequency to around 0.5. Let's change the offset to about 5. Let's change the amplitude to about 15. So basically now the number being output by this LFO operator, it's going to switch. It's going to start at 6 and it's going to go up to about 21 because 6 plus 15 is 21. So the highest value coming from this LFO will basically be the 21 that I set in the parameters in the parameters of this Fong operator. So, so now for the Fong operator, instead of the bump scale being a static 21, we can basically go to our LFO operator that we just dropped, press that viewer active button, 
And then we can drag and drop the LFO onto the bump scale parameter of our Fong operator and drop that onto the bump scale parameter of our Fong operator. And then we can just click on export chop. And now you can see that parameter is dynamic and you can see the result in the background of touch designer it goes from being bumpy to being smooth to being bumpy again. And if we wanted to make that more severe, we could just turn off the viewer active button for the LFO operator, click on that. And then for the offset, we could increase the offset by one or two, and then we could increase the amplitude by about 10. And now you can see it gets very bumpy and then very smooth. One of the last things I would do here is basically add a black background to the rendering that we have here. So what I'm gonna do is right click on the output of our render operator and then just click on transform, drop transform somewhere to the right of render. And in the parameters of the transform operator, just click this toggle switch that says comp over background color. And then in the fourth box of the background color parameter, change that fourth box from zero to one. Now you can see the background of this transform operator is black. So at this point, we're just gonna turn off the display switch for the render operator, and then let's turn on the display switch for the transform operator. And now our animation has a black background. Okay, one cool modification that I made to this project was to add a twist operator just after the last noise operator in between noise and texture. I just added twist. So I'll show you how to do that right now. And here is what it looks like with the twist operator added. So basically, I'm just going to actually delete this and show you how to do that. So just double click on the empty grid area somewhere near noise. And then in the SOP category, go ahead and click on twist. And then just drop twist somewhere between noise and texture. Just go ahead and make sure those connections are replaced so that twist is between noise and texture. And now we should see our twist. And now in the parameters of our twist operator, let's just change the primary axis from X to Z. And let's change the strength to about 50. And now let's go ahead and see what that looks like. That's basically it for this tutorial. I hope you found this useful. If you did, please leave a comment below. Let me know what you think.